And the police officer turned round and told my brother that my dad would be home in 24 hours. It's been 11 and a half years and he still hasn't come home. My dad was accused of being the land organiser of, at the time, the UK's biggest cocaine drug smuggle ever, 54 million pounds worth. A lot of people started referring to them as the Freshwater Five. It caught a lot of people's attention. We had people driving past the house shouting, we know where your dad is. Everybody saw him in handcuffs being taken to an unmarked police car. As a child, you get told that the police are there to help you. As a seven-year-old, I'd be scared to see them in the street because they raided my house and took my dad away from me because we believe he is innocent. My name is Maisie Beer, I'm 19, and my dad was convicted of being part of a £54 million drug smuggle. I was a seven-year-old child with a four-year-old brother and a 15-year-old sister, happily married parents who both had great jobs. My dad was going to work one day. Someone knew that he was going through that part of the island and just said, oh, could you pick someone up and bring them over here for me? Six months later, our house got raided. My dad got taken. We got put in a separate room whilst my dad was being questioned. Sat in our dining room, somewhere that used to feel so safe and secure, but we were surrounded by all these people having no idea what was going on. And there's a high school the other end of our road. So everybody saw him in handcuffs being taken to an unmarked police car. My dad himself never went on the boat. It was meant to just be a normal fishing trip. The four men that were on the boat, they were supposed to be picking these drugs up off of a large container ship, holdalls of cocaine, and dropping them off in Freshwater Bay, a popular tourist spot, especially in the middle of May when this supposedly happened. Whilst there was a policeman stood on the cliff watching them do so. And my dad, who never even stepped foot on the boat, was deemed to be the land organiser of this £54 million drug smuggle. The media got hold of the story pretty much instantly. We had no idea what the future held. Went from 24 hours to 48 hours to 72 hours, and then he never came home. I wasn't old enough to understand fully I just knew that and prison was meant to be for bad people, but my dad wasn't a bad person. My dad got sentenced to 24 years in prison. That evening, my mum came back to the island after my dad had been found guilty. She didn't tell my brother and I because she thought it was in our best interests, because she thought it was all some mistake and it was going to get corrected. A girl came over to me at school. I was in year three. She was one of the year sixes and just said, your dad's a bad man. He's going to prison for a very, very long time. I just remember feeling very, very confused when she said those words to me and just kind of looking around to my friends and my heart sinking and hearing the words, your dad's a really bad man. We went from being this very happy family to then suddenly having a big hole, not knowing how to fill it, not really understanding why it had happened or how it had happened still. Our house number and our road name was in the newspaper. Mum tried to avoid taking us into shops because as soon as you walk in a shop, you see my dad's face plastered on the front of this newspaper. We had poo put through the letterbox and I went to a different high school to a lot of people. My first day, I had someone come up to me and asked me if I had any cocaine and told me that they knew who my dad was. It went from being this idyllic little island to suddenly everyone being all up in your business and not being able to go anywhere without somebody knowing something about it. I don't think we would have come as far as we have done if my mum wasn't as strong a character as she is. And we've all grown to be very different people to the people we would have been if our life had carried on very comfortable way that it had been. 
Growing up on the Isle of Wight was great, it's beautiful. My mum has worked in a primary school for well over 20 years. My dad was a scaffolder, very successful, had his own business. I'm very much a daddy's girl. To begin with, dad would get to call us, I think it was just once a day. You'd have to keep checking the phone to see how long you'd been on the phone for because he'd have to get through all of us before he ran out of time. You'd get a letter, he'd kind of sit down one night and write one to me, the next night and write one to my sister, and then to my brother, and then he'd write my mum one every single night. He was up in Birmingham at one point, so we wouldn't be able to get up there very often. But then at one point, he was in a prison on the island, so we used to see him every weekend. I'd go to a birthday party with one of my school friends in the morning, and then one of the parents would drop me off there, still in my party outfit, to go and spend the afternoon with my dad. He's missed a lot since being in prison. Birthdays, Christmases, family events. He's missed the passing of his best friend and his father. My dad didn't get the chance to see him because of COVID. The last thing that my granddad did was have the phone held up to his ear so that my dad could speak to him. From the moment that he was arrested, we were trying to prove his innocence and fight his name. We had our first appeal, but we were kind of oblivious to what work needed to be put in. But now we have the charity law firm appeal and they're now helping us 11 and a half years we've been fighting. There's so much more that I want to do with my life. I want to go out there and help other people clear their names and get them freed and brought back into society. It's one of those difficult things with him being brought back into society because he's not going to have that business that he had before he went away. I mean, it's going to be very hard for him to basically start all over again because clients that he used to have before, they're not going to want to use someone who's been in prison to do somebody else's house up. People just don't necessarily do their research and believe everything that they hear or they see. I think the reason that people get so aggravated by this story is the fact that we're probably fighting so hard. We aren't happy with the fact they've been proven guilty or been sentenced as guilty. People would rather we just shut up and were silenced by it all and just accepted the fact that they're guilty. My advice to somebody who was going through a similar situation to us would just be to keep going, don't give up and keep fighting.